The recipe said, set the oven to 180 degrees. Now I can't open it because the door is facing the wall. The movie begins with a scene where a cargo ship is being attacked by pirates during a heavy storm. Aquaman appears from the sea on his enormous seahorse named Storm. He quickly defeats the pirates while narrating his experiences over recent years. Since beating his sibling, Ocean Master, also known as Orm, Arthur has become the ruler of Atlantis, a role he finds uninteresting. He's also married Mira, and they have a son named Arthur Jr. Arthur's parents, Thomas and Atlanta, help with raising Jr. while Arthur juggles his responsibilities as both the king and Aquaman. Jr. is also seen to have Arthur's gift of talking to sea creatures. In the Arctic, David Kane, known as Black Manta, is leading a search team seeking revenge on Aquaman. He's joined by marine scientist Dr. Stephen Shin and others to find Atlantis. Shin and another team member slip into a deep ice crack. A long dormant creature in the ice releases its tentacle, grabbing and killing the team member. David and his group later rescue Shin and encounter more creatures frozen in the ice. David dives into the water and finds the black trident. Joining its two pieces, he envisions a fierce king, Kordax, who offers to aid him in defeating his foe if David releases him. Five months on, the world's temperatures are climbing rapidly. Mira takes Arthur to the Atlantis Council, led by Karshin, to discuss this problem. Arthur thinks it's time for Atlantis to show itself to the surface world, but everyone disagrees. Arthur then has a beer with his dad, talking about the difficulties of being king when others don't agree with him. Meanwhile, in the Atlantic, David is searching for a power source named Oracle Kum, found in Atlantis, which can energize Shin's machines. After locating the Atlantean Oracle Kum, David attacks Atlantis. Atlanta and Mira defend their home and confront Black Manta. However, he uses his laser helmet to overpower Mira. Before he can harm her, Aquaman arrives to battle. Manta, wielding the Black Trident, is stronger and fights without his suit. Arthur chases David, but David uses a device on his ship to send out a sonic wave, knocking Arthur unconscious. Following the incident, Karshan tries to blame Arthur for Atlantis' attack, while Mira ends up in the hospital. Arthur, along with Atlanta and King Nereus, discuss how to confront Black Manta's menace. They figure out that David is using the Orichalcum to increase global temperatures. To track down Manta, Arthur suggests they need Orm's assistance, despite Atlanta and Nereus advising against releasing him from jail. Arthur trusts that his brother will be reliable this time. Arthur dons a disguise suit to infiltrate the Fisherman Kingdom's prison, accompanied by a cephalopod named Topo, skilled in hiding. Orm, having been largely deprived of water, is found in a weakened state. Arthur fights against the brutal guards to liberate Orm, who is initially upset to see Arthur. The brothers then commandeer two giant creatures to escape to the surface. While pursued by more guards, Orm reaches the shore and regains his strength, defeating the guards. Arthur and Orm quickly dive back into the sea to avoid further conflict. The duo heads to an underwater den of pirates, the Sunken Citadel. There, they confront a criminal leader named Kingfish for details on David's whereabouts. When Kingfish declines to cooperate, Arthur and Orm battle his henchmen. Arthur forces Kingfish to reveal that Manta might be hiding in an inactive volcano known as Devil's Deep by putting a water-draining helmet on him. Once they gather enough information, Arthur breaks the helmet and escapes with Orm. Shin overhears David speaking to Kordax in the mirror, but the vision of the malevolent king vanishes before Shin can see him. When David exits the room, Shin touches the black trident and experiences Kordax's visions. David warns Shin against prying into his plans. Arthur, Orm, and Topo arrive at an island where Devil's Deep is located, encircled by a dense jungle. They notice that the flora and fauna have undergone mutations, leading them to flee from a swarm of enormous insects. Arthur knocks down a statue to create a path for himself and Orm, and then they push the statue off the edge to defeat the insects chasing them. During their journey to their target, Arthur and Orm argue, but eventually locate Manta's headquarters, quietly neutralizing some of his guards. 
Shin, realizing David's extreme and perilous nature, finds them and asks to join their cause. Before Shin can fully explain the situation, David's ally Stingray bursts in, knocking Shin out. The villains chase the brothers, with Stingray operating a large, tentacled robot. Arthur and Orm collaborate to defeat the robot, but then Manta appears for a confrontation. They engage him in battle, and just when Manta is about to defeat Orm, Atlantean soldiers led by Nereus intervene, destroying the base. Manta and his crew flee after using the sonic pulse on Arthur again, but Mira rescues him. Recovering on land, Orm shares his knowledge of the Black Trident with Arthur, having briefly held it during the fight with Manta. Kordax, King Atlan's brother, established his own realm, Necrus, the eponymous Lost Kingdom, and made the Black Trident to try to take over Atlantis. The Trident corrupted Kordax, transforming him and his followers into monsters. To release Kordax, blood from a direct descendant of Atlan is needed, putting Arthur, Orm, Atlanta, and Arthur Jr. at risk. As feared, Manta attacks Thomas at his house in Anesty Bay, abducts Jr., and sets the house ablaze. Arthur saves his father and entrusts him to Atlanta for care. After learning about Jr.'s abduction, Shin alerts the Atlanteans for help. Arthur, alongside Mira, Orm, Nereus, and the Brine King, sets out to rescue Jr. David and Stingray reach Necris, preparing to use Junior at Kordax's throne. Arthur calls upon sea creatures for assistance. Their interference causes an explosion in the villain's base, eliminating Stingray and other henchmen. As Manta is about to use Junior's blood, Shin replaces it with a bomb-filled bag and rescues Junior. Arthur and Orm fight through more henchmen, then confront Manta. Manta injures Arthur, drawing blood and awakening Kordax. Orm grabs the Black Trident and starts to fall under Kordax's sinister sway. Kordax attempts to pit the brothers against each other, but Arthur reaches out to Orm's sense of goodness, helping them both resist the influence. Arthur then throws the Black Trident at Kordax, who catches it. Shin throws Arthur's trident to him, and Arthur throws it right through the Black Trident, breaking it and defeating Kordax. As Kordax perishes, Necris begins to collapse. David finds himself near a gaping chasm, and although Arthur tries to save him, David defiantly says, never, and chooses to fall to his demise. The rest manage to escape. After their escape, Arthur and Mira express their gratitude to Shin for rescuing Junior. The group decides to pretend Orm perished in Necrus's collapse, allowing him to leave freely. Orm says goodbye to his brother and mother before departing. Back in Atlantis, Arthur fulfills his pledge to disclose the existence of Atlantis to the surface world. Atlantis emerges from the sea, visible to the entire world, and Arthur addresses the United Nations, advocating for unity between land and sea. He concludes his speech proudly declaring himself the king of Atlantis, and of course, Aquaman. In a post credit scene, Orm is shown enjoying a cheeseburger, a food Arthur had once recommended. He then notices a cockroach, referencing Arthur's joke about people eating cockroaches, and decides to add it to his burger. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.